This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Living in the Detroit area, the North American International Auto Show has always been a big deal. But as a member of the media, it felt like unless you were forced to go, there was really no reason to go to the Detroit show this year. There was no energy. The real party was at the Battery Show in Novi, Michigan, which is about 40 minutes outside of the Motor City. This was a showcase of all the latest and greatest electric technologies, and you may have seen our videos of John cruising the floor. One of the big things I took away from the Battery Show is that we should quickly start seeing other countries reduce their dependence on China for battery materials. Graphite is a major part of a battery, making up 30% of its total materials. But right now, over 80% of the world's graphite comes from China. So a company called Anovion is bringing production of synthetic graphite to North America. It takes petroleum coke, which is a waste product from the fossil fuel refining process, and in 10 to 15 steps, turns it into battery-grade graphite. Anovian says its process is about 60% less carbon intensive than the way most Chinese companies make graphite. It's already building its first plant in Georgia and says it wants two more. But we also learned of another more sustainable way to make graphite. A company called NanoTerraTech, which is based in Canada, showed us how it can make graphite from wood. It takes the waste from sawmills, the sawdust, the bark, the stuff they don't want, and then turns it into what it calls biographite. NanoTerraTech says biographite is a direct replacement for synthetic or natural graphite, and its process can be done completely with renewable energy. And because I know you want to know, the wood to graphite ratio is 4 to 1. So for example, if you had 200,000 tons of wood waste, you would get 50,000 tons of graphite back. Another sense I got from the battery show is that we're going to start seeing a lot more battery storage. Our next energy or one was showing off its three and a half megawatt hour grid storage system. Now you might remember that name. We had their founder on a recent AutoLine After Hours talking mostly about their unique battery technology for EVs. It's an interesting watch that I'd recommend. But one is also piling 45 of its Aries LFP packs, which it normally supplies for commercial vehicles, and is creating these grid storage systems. The idea is to use wind and solar to charge up the batteries, and then that could be used for a number of things, like charging up EVs or selling electricity back to the grid during high demand when prices are also high. And I think we got a little insight as to why we could see more of these systems. One says the IRA provides more incentives for stationary storage than it does for automotive. And the ability to make money off this is another driving force. Tesla has shown through its auto bidder service, which uses AI to trade electricity stored in its energy assets, like stationary storage, that it can then turn into a good profit. And I don't think it's any coincidence that one's first grid storage client is Berkshire Hathaway. Now, I know it may seem like I went into great detail, but there's a lot more to learn. I only scratched the surface on how the IRA could have a big impact on each of these companies. And we also produced another nine videos on top of this. So if you'd like to check that out, we'll provide a link to the playlist. With Tejin Automotive Technologies, we combine world-class composite materials expertise with cutting-edge designs. Because frankly, there are better ways to lightweight vehicles. So lighten up with Tejin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. Good news for tool and die companies in North America. According to a study from Harbor Results and Auto Forecast Solutions, automakers will significantly boost spending on tooling in the next few years, to help support the introduction of new models. Tool and die companies have been struggling the last three years, but the study says tool spending will hit $7 billion in 2025, up from $5 billion last year. Automakers plan to introduce 130 new models between now and 2030, and they'll convert or build 56 plants to produce those vehicles. But most of the tooling investment will still go towards internal combustion vehicles. 
and the researchers are skeptical that automakers will hit their EV targets in the coming years because of high costs, a poor charging infrastructure, and range anxiety. Which automakers are the best at writing software? The Americans and the Chinese are. That's according to an index created by Gartner, a consulting firm. It calls it the Digital Automaker Index, and it studies the software capabilities of automakers in eight different areas, including leadership, talent, corporate culture, architecture, connected vehicle, autonomy, electrification, smart cockpits, and online sales. And not surprisingly, Tesla tops the list. It's followed by Neo and Xpeng. Then come Rivian, Lucid, General Motors, Geely and Ford. VW and Mercedes are in the top 10, but the Japanese and the Koreans are at the very bottom of the list. The recycling of EV batteries is still in its early days, but there's growing global interest because it's already profitable. NMC batteries, or ones with nickel, manganese, and cobalt, contain an average of $10,000 worth of materials for every ton of battery cell weight. LFP batteries, or lithium iron phosphate, have about $4,000 worth of materials, according to a company called Fast Markets that tracks commodity prices. S&P Global Commodity Insights is forecasting that battery recycling will provide 11% of all the lithium, 11% of the nickel, and 44% of the cobalt needed to make new batteries by the end of this decade. Battery recycling companies like Serba and Lifecycle have told Autoline that in a couple of decades, recycling could replace a significant amount of raw material mining. As public EV charging stations pop up all across the U.S. and Europe, the number of gas stations is falling fast. According to DBRS Morningstar, which is a credit ratings company, the number of gas stations in the U.S. and the U.K. have fallen 35% since the year 2000, and there are now 65,000 fewer gas stations in the U.S. than there were in the 1990s. Morningstar says gas station owners could face a lot more competition than they did before. Many EV owners are installing home chargers. Companies like Walmart are installing public chargers. Many automakers are licensing Tesla's supercharger network and seven automakers are joining forces to develop their own charging network. So Morningstar says gas station operators need to evolve and offer more services to remain competitive. If advanced driver assistance systems, or ADAS, were made standard equipment across the industry, it could save hundreds of thousands of lives. According to a study funded by the AAA with research performed by the University of North Carolina, ADAS technology, like automatic emergency braking and other warnings, could prevent up to 250,000 deaths over the next 30 years in the U.S. It could also prevent another 37 million crashes and 14 million injuries over the same period. But to get those benefits, more vehicles need to be equipped with the technology. Currently, only about a quarter of registered vehicles have automatic emergency braking or blind spot warnings. By 2027, that's expected to increase to about half of all vehicles. The AAA also says there's confusion with drivers on how to properly use ADAS technology, and more needs to be done to educate drivers on how to use it. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Scheffler, we pioneer motion. And by Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. 
electrifying mobility, manufacturing smarter, reducing CO2 emissions, making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.